So there you have it. We've got a couple of new signings to talk about. Norwich City confirming the signings of Shemiswab, Poheta and Jacob Sorensen this week. Jacob and I are here to discuss that amongst a few other things. Jacob, how you doing, mate? Yeah, really good. Thanks, mate. Yourself? Yeah, good. It's nice to have something positive to talk about again, isn't it? Yeah, mate. Seeing Norwich actually splash the money for a change. Yeah, I look forward to the championship rather than the uh, the grind that has become the Premier League. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. What's also nice is that we can sign these players early doors, which is nothing new, but we don't have to sell anyone, sell anyone before doing that now. Yeah, I think it was, what, a couple of weeks ago, Stuart Webber came out with that um, the interview and saying we haven't got a gun to our head in terms of transfers. And yeah, it's nice to kind of see some fresh blood come in and it, it does kind of put in the back of your mind, think, yeah, players are going, but it's nice to see the club being proactive rather than reactive, isn't it? Yeah, Absolutely. So, who do you want to talk about first, Shemiswav or Jacob? Oh, well, uh, well, should we go Shemiswav? I think I got yeah. that right. Yeah, we'll, say, we'll go with him first because then we don't have to keep pronouncing it. <laughs> yeah. So, he looks like a predomin- predominantly left winger, but he's also played on the right this season. Yeah, well, I think he kind of strikes me as a left footy Donel Hernandez. I think we've seen a couple of reports saying he's absolutely rapid, but the, the final ball, the final finish isn't quite there. The right foot is not very strong, which does just kind of strike me as Onel Hernandez 2.0, really. But we do need a bit more pace, don't we? I think we're always crying out for, apart from what Onel Hernandez, Adam Eder, realistically up there, we haven't got enough pace to kind of either counter-attack or we'll just go full throttle at a team and kind of go direct uh, down the wing. So, um, yeah, a good cheap buy. And to be honest, you've got no risk there, really, have you? I know two over two million on a player for us is a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, not really. No, I was going to say, nearly three million. I nearly fell off my chair, but <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, you mentioned he's a bit like O'Neill. The mm. thought of him and Poheta going at a championship fullbacks is quite exciting, actually. Oh, definitely, yeah. Like you say, it's just going to be completely direct, which is it just adds a different dynamism to Norris, doesn't it? I think this season we've kind of said in pods a lot that we just don't have a, a plan B, and I think either of them if one's tiring you can bring one on or like you say have both on at the same time it's going to cause hell for ch- of some championship fullbacks for sure well, he's former Leipzig under 19 mm. he's played Polish under 21 internationals and actually I was surprised at this but he's also Norwich's first Polish player is he? oh nice yeah see I, I thought is that right? and then I remember being linked with um, Christian Bielik from Arsenal a yeah, few yeah. years ago I think that's where I was getting confused. But yeah, apparently, oh, said NCFC numbers says it, so it must be right. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. So eight goals, five assists in the extra class of this season. Um, mm. Mid-table team. But um, they're not bad numbers. No, well, if you've got the same return, I know it's a big step up, but if you've got the same return in the championship for the first season, you'd be happy, wouldn't you? It's going to take him some time, I think. With Ona, we got him in January, didn't we? And for that six months, you could saw the few months remaining of the season, you could see he had potential and had pace, but he just didn't have that final product, which he has developed over the time. He could, he can still develop. But yeah, I, I'd say he's going to be exciting to a certain point. I don't know, obviously, the final ball. Obviously, you see compilation clips of him. Some of his finishes are, are fantastic. They seem to be kind of, he doesn't have to think about it too much. It's kind of, um, just head down, smash rather than right, pick your place. But we'll see. I think he's a interesting player and good to kind of look at someone different again and, and see what's going to happen. I think it's going to be a bit of re- a rebuild, almost like Farker's second season all over again, really, isn't it? I think so. But whilst we're on the topic, what is fair to expect from Poeta in the first season? Well, we were kind of talking off before the video, I think yesterday, wasn't it? And we were looking at O'Neill's stats um, last season. Was it eight goals, 10 assists, something yeah. similar to that? Which yeah. is which is pretty impressive for a team. And let's be honest, we'll, we'll be looking top six minimum next season. Anything lower than that will be a disappointment. Um, I think he's here to kind of start. So again, you'd say, what, six and six, seven and seven goals and assists would be, would be very good. Um, if he's starting, I'd say that would be a success, really. Yeah, agreed. All right, let's talk about a bit of Jacob Sorensen. Um, first yeah, no. thing, is it is it Jacob? Yeah, we'll call him that because it's a great name. Not Jacob <laughs> no, or yeah. Jacob. Well, yeah, a man, that, well, obviously, that's, that's my name. And every country I go to, it's a different pronunciation. So you'd imagine it's Jacob or Jacob or just call him what you want, mate. As long as he's good, I don't care. 
And are, are we going for Sorensen or Sorensen? I'm guessing it's Sorensen if he's Danish. Yeah, I'd say we need to get Michael Bailey on, don't we? He's a man of who's very good of Drummich rather than Dermich. <laughs> um, but do. yeah, it will be. Um, we'll go, yeah, we'll go Sorensen. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Jacob cool. Sorensen. Let's go with that now. Lovely. Till told otherwise. An, an initial 700k, so another cheap one. Yeah, again, you look at it and you think, no matter what the expectations are for him, he should exceed whatever he does. Like as long as he plays solidly enough in the championship season, he he his value will be higher than that. Yeah, apparently Brentford and Standard Liège were in for him. Um, if Brentford are in for a player, his stat his stats are usually decent. Um, yeah, they, they use the money ball, don't they? I think they got yeah. Matthias Jensen. They were looking at him in Denmark. Then he went to sell to Vigo and then came to Brentford. So they, they look at that league and like you say, um, it's, it's a good technical league, isn't it? Not very physical, but you can see players like Odegaard from there, obviously different level in terms of Real Madrid, but um, they do uh, produce good technical players there. Yeah. Interestingly, made his es- Esberg, I'm going to go with, that might not be right. <laughs> Fine, made his fine. debut under his dad when uh, his dad's called Lars Sorensen. He was manager for a bit, so he made his debut under him. Interestingly, mm-hmm. um, so basically the team they got promoted, finished third in the Danish top flight mm. last, and then got relegated. And then they? This season got relegated. Yeah, yeah. Um, twenty-two points from thirty-two games. So similar season to what Norwich have had to be honest with you. <laughs> Sounds yeah, familiar, well, anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, definitely. I think. Um... I think I saw uh, Jens Berthel Askew, former Norwich player, kind of have a talk about, um, about him. And he said, yeah, his, his first season in that division was was great. And this season has been not so great. Obviously, the team have been poor, haven't they? And you look at it again, look at the compilation clips that we've shown at the start of the video. You can see you can ping it about. He's got a good hit on him. Um, he's going to be a good technical player. We, we don't buy central midfielders who can, or CDMs who can play centre-back. We'll see where Daniel Farker sees him, but they'll be good on the ball. I think he's big. He's a big lad for me. He looks like the championship at the moment could eat him alive. I think he does need to get ready for that. And again, it will take him some time to get um, into the swing of things because, the, as we know, the championship's for me the most ferocious, unforgiving league in, in the world. Agreed. You touched on it there. Predominantly a CDM, but can also play centre back. If you were to put money on it, where would you expect to see him? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, Harvey's going to clip this up so if I'm wrong <laughs> I know I'm going to be shown it a million times I'm going to say CDM mate I think we need an enforcer in there for me I don't think Melvin City will be ready this year and from reports that I've seen I don't think he's going to be a battering ram either um, I think he will or Sorensen will develop well, be allowed to develop whilst Tete is in his final year Yeah, completely agree um, Michael Bailey wrote a lovely article on Sorensen for The Athletic, read it, took a few things away from it, but it looks that he, he looks, he's a defensive midfielder, but he brings the ball forward via a dribble and he's got a decent passing range. Wins his duels looking at the stats. He sounds pretty decent. Are we putting him down as a sort of a, a tete with more technical ability? Yeah, maybe a bit of a, a tribal but with a bit more bite and physicality. Mm. I think that's one thing we're missing in that midfield role is um, an enforcer who can take the ball forward. I know Kenny McClay makes good forward runs, but for me, I don't. You can say it numerous times. He's not a player who should be playing in that two. Really, that's not his position, is it? He's more of a number ten, which we might see next season. I think, you know, we need someone there. Well, I think that'll be again. We'll talk about future transfers potentially later on, but there is a, a need for a number ten there. But yeah, I think somebody can bring the ball forward um, and be physical. That's really what we need. Was what we've been lacking this year to keep relying on Alex Tete. I know he's been a fantastic servant, but to rely on a 34-year-old in the Prem is, shows that we're, we're lacking there, really. Yeah, I think so. Um, I asked you the same question of Quajeta. I'm going to ask you again now for Sorensen. What's reasonable to expect in his first season? Um, again, I think for him, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because in the middle of the park is where the ferociousness of the championship is. I think against weaker teams, Quajeta will, will shine against poorer fullbacks. I think in the, in the championship, every midfield is either physical or has ability. Um, for me, I think solid start. You want to see 25 to 30 games minimum, really, with him, don't you? In terms of that's not just starting, but and putting a stamper down. I think um, 
Tom Tribal started well when he came here, but has since then faded away in the Premier League. Um, so yeah, I want to see a solid display. I want to see him be able to stand up to the league and what it throws at him, really. Yeah, I think if he's going to be an understudy for Alex Tete, his primary aim is going to be getting on the pitch, isn't it? Yeah, and to be fair, like with Alex Tete, you don't want to be like his knees are gone. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of the amount of kind of pain he must be going through each game is is incredible, really, and shows how much he loves the club. So if you can, obviously, we know the championship Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. If you can alternate between those players, then happy days, really. Right. He's played about so, 100 games as well, sorry, just to interrupt. Yeah, he's played fine, about 100 games before 22. So he's 22 now, played 100 games so far. So he's, to be fair, knows no football. <laughs> like we're not buying, yeah. like you said about Bielik earlier, we're not buying someone who's been in a reserve team uh, at a big club and hasn't played enough football yet to kind of find his niches, find his weaknesses. I, I think he will know what he needs to develop on and can quickly change to that considering the amount of games he's played. Yeah. Oh, so that's the, the lowdown on the new lads, basically. Mm. Um, but the squad for next season is starting to take shape slowly now, or actually quite yep. quickly. I'm mm. expecting a few more signings soon. Um, I mean, we've already got McCallum, Melbourne City and Daniel Sonani confirmed. Yep. Um, are you expecting all of them to be in the first team whilst we're on the topic? I don't get why you buy Sam McCallum from a top League One team. To play in the championship if he's not going to play so yeah. I'd that's why I see Jamal going but it's an interesting one is it I think Danel Sonani again from Luxembourg is a completely different league but has played Europa League football I know we keep going back to that don't we he scored twice against Sevilla that's all we're going to keep saying <laughs> honestly but, he, did. <laughs> he was good we promise but again I'd expect to see him um Melbourne City I would be surprised I think if you buy Sorensen and City, I'd be very surprised if they're both together. Mm. I think you, you loan maybe City out for another year or develop him. I know, obviously, Christoph Sim and Alex Tete have been speaking to him over the uh, the lockdown period because what we learned is Christoph Simmons, as well as being a fantastic man, is fluent in French, German and English. Of yeah, of course <laughs> just it is. Casually. Um, he's just remarkable, isn't he? Um, but yeah, so it will be interesting. I, I, I'd say give more time on Melbourne City and Sorensen but that, that prediction could come back to bite me in, on the bum. Yeah. So they're the ones that are confirmed. There are also a few rumoured transfers. Barley Mumba and Matthew Dennis look to be done. Yeah, it was a fantastic tweet from yourself there, wasn't it, about uh, the old chips and pub? <laughs> I thought that's what I'd be doing. I doubt they were. No, yeah. No, I think... <laughs> um, so Barley Mumba is an interesting one, isn't he? I think he, he came on for his first ever game at, well, whilst he was still at school. And John O'Shea just gave him the armband. So he is Sunderland's youngest ever captain. Um, is a centre midfielder. Hasn't really played much recently, has he at all? I think he's been on loan to South Shields this year um, and kind of been playing the sort of South Shields um, support. So he's been playing up front right wing. Um, I've heard rumours that he could be back up right back. I've heard he that as well. well. Mm. Um, but you can't rely on Sam Byram. And I think, well, I think both of us agree that Max Aarons, we would be surprised if he stayed. Yeah, yeah so relying on Sam Byron, who could be out for a long time yet, would be... Um, oh, I can't see that happening. I can't see us relying just on him, but we'll see. It'll be interesting. I think he's, again, potential. And Dennis, like you said, I, I think he's going to be under 20 freeze. Yeah, I thought that too. Um, the other name that keeps popping up, Sebastian Soto. Yeah, the American. Um, American? Yep. Yeah. Sebastian Soto. Sebastian Soto. Um, <laughs> That could be interesting. The striker, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it could be very interesting simply because look at the fan base in America. You get an American player, like look at Pulisic at Chelsea. You get a whole different kind of um, fan base there, which I'm not saying it is a marked employer. I think he is a good player anyway. He does look like a good young striker. Um, will be interesting to see. I don't think he'll. I don't think he'll be anywhere near the first team yet. But again, could be an interesting player on, on the cheap as well. So it could be very interesting to see. Well, you mentioned the American market there. It's, mm. You know, we've already got a link to Tampa Bay. It's all, yeah, they're they're already an affiliate. Bad. So um, maybe that is the game plan. Maybe we are looking for commercial revenue. Who knows? Um, with these players coming in, we are going to have to see some go, aren't we? Unfortunately. So who is who is 
your top three candidates on the chopping block, who's in danger of going? And not uh, not the players that we think will go because they're good, the players that have underperformed and might be shipped okay. out. Okay. Um, so underperformed, I'd say underperformed slash could be disruptive influence. I'd be very surprised if Morris Leitner, Tom Tribal, in those two in particular stay. Because I think that just with the whole rigmarole of kind of Anna Tribal, I know she's very vocal. I don't think Daniel Farker likes that outside influence. And Probably not. There's a reason why he's been at so many clubs. He hasn't settled. I think he's been fine here. I think he'd be all right in the championship. But yeah. I, to be for me personally, I wouldn't be massively upset if he went. Marek Sleitner, again, there's been reports, hasn't there, rumours that bust up with Farker. I just think in this league, in a league where we don't dominate possession, he doesn't have an influence. But I think in the championship, if you got him fit and right, he would be great. But I'd be very surprised if we saw both of them stay for me. Good. Uh, Leitner has obviously got a hernia. He's just had the operation on his hernia, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. um, so he's obviously out of the minute. Before he was injured, he looked on... I'm only going by his Instagram story, which is not a lot to go on. <laughs> but he looked like he had his head back in the game. He looked focused, mm -hmm. was you know, posting stuff about himself and the club quite a bit daily. And I thought yeah. maybe he's turned a corner. But see, I, th I think Mo's great in the championship. I wonder if it'd be worth keeping him around, at least for the championship campaign. But... Yeah, well, I like, like I said, I think with, with the ball and when we've got possession, you saw how good he was and he has yeah. got potential. Um, I just don't know if he makes the cut in the Premier League. Yeah, completely agree, yeah. Um, Dermich or Drumich um, <laughs> probably should go. Whether we'll find a buyer or not, I'm not so sure. Um, since lockdown, yeah, he's been appalling. Like I think before lockdown, we were I remember us both being at Spurs and we were like, he's playing well. Even before the goal, he played well in the first half. He was chasing causes. But since lockdown, he's he's played like a player who knows we're going down and doesn't want to be in the championship. That's my personal view. And it, he kind of comes across as that, that player who you don't want at a club in terms of a foreign player brought in for the Premier League who has come in and now looks, knows we're in trouble, knows we're now relegated. And has just kind of gone, you know what, I don't, don't really care. Um, obviously suspended now for the rest of the season will be for two other games you'd imagine no matter where he is same with Emmy. but uh, yeah I'd be surprised if he stayed again I think he is on bigger wages again that's been banded about how much he's actually on but he will be on the bigger scale because obviously he's a free transfer um, I wouldn't surprise if he tried to get back to Germany would it really no not massively um, any positions on the pitch where you feel we need to strengthen that we haven't heard rumours about yet. Cam, number 10, 100%. Agreed. I, know, I yeah. guess with, with Danel Sonani, you've heard rumours that he's a striker and left wing. But for me, number 10, like at the moment, we've currently only got Marcus Stiefman, who is good in the championship. Um, hasn't, again, hasn't really been given a massive opportunity this year, but also hasn't really taken it when he has. But for me, number 10, definitely. Sends back if a player goes and a right back for me, because I think Aaron's will go. Mm. Yeah, we are going to be filling voids eventually, aren't we? Once players go, and a new goalkeeper, um, backup yes. goalkeeper is. Yeah, we're not going to rely on McGovern to stop Krull. Yeah, there are, there's. It's definitely going to be a busy summer, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's going to be. I think the old uh, Norwich admin's going to be working yeah. overtime because <laughs> yeah. you can imagine at least three players are going, three big players, and then like you said, like potentially Dermich, Leitner. Tribal, those kind of players who have been in and around but not played enough, not made the cut this year, um, they could they could want to move. And then you never know, like when um, a couple of years ago, I never thought Josh Murphy would go. I was very surprised by that. So you could get one of those. You think, where on earth has that come from? That could be a Tim Crawl. You never know, which would be disastrous, really, I, I think. But you, like we've talked about it before, Newcastle, Sel Dubravka, who's had a good season. Then, you know, the lure of going back to Newcastle, you never know. Premier League football. And he has does he does deserve that. He's one of very few in that squad who deserves Premier League football again. Yeah, agreed. Whilst we're on the topic of Timmy Crow, <clears throat> let's talk about mm. player of the season because I think for once in our existence, we the fans have got it spot on this season. So it's, yeah, back. for the record, Tete third, Todd second, Timmy Crow first, which I can't argue with. I think that's great. 
no, I think, well, for how long has Tete been here? Eight years and has never Eight really been in and around it, has he? So he's never really been in and around the conversation. I think that's the minimum he deserved. It's all a bit of criticism for Todd. I don't get that. I think he has been by far the most developed player this year by a country mile. Like, you look at last year. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you look at last year and you think he's not going to make the cut at all. And he has been, again, one of the standouts. And Tim Crawl has been by far 100% the best player. No, no shadow of a doubt. Yeah. I'll argue with that. Yeah, you said it then, you took the words out of my mouth. Um, when we were heading into the Prem, you have to think back to last summer. Todd wasn't actually involved that much. And no, not he Todd. He come on leaps and bounds. Of course, when Emmy was suspended, wasn't it, against um, QPR, he had those, what, three games to prove himself, and he didn't. Let's be honest, he was poor against each opposition. And then Emmy came back in and we didn't see him again. Um, but yeah, I, I think he did himself a complete justice in terms of over that summer, he's completely redeveloped his body. I think he was a lot stronger. And then his belief as well. He got into the goal, scoring opportunities, positions. And if he does get a move, fair play to him, because I think he deserves it. Yeah, I'll argue with that. Final thing to touch on before we sign off. Remy Matthews is training with Ipswich, the little weasel. What's that about? <laughs> yeah, um, obviously no Bolton got relegated. So, and they're in fine out there, not going to be able to cope with his wages. Um as long as they stay down in League One, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, so couldn't care less. Right, that's a bit, nice little intro for the new lads. We've covered a few topics there for you to discuss. Um, Jacob, talk to me about socials. What's going on over there? Well, we're going to be putting this up, obviously. And then I think we've got a couple of videos lined up, haven't we, in terms of the, the season and a guest next week. Who, so, yes. we'll review ne- so we'll review the season, what's gone wrong next week with a special guest. And then hopefully another video to kind of analyse it all with no bias. <laughs> and um, yeah, and it'll be interesting. I think we're all of us, including Harvey, is unfortunately not here at the minute, um, is are really looking forward to next season and kind of pushing the boat out for a big championship season and kind of hopefully a promotion season. Let's hope so. Right, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, whatever you've been doing. Um, enjoy the rest of your week and we will be back with you very soon. Cheers. See ya.